So we had a bunch of compounds that people seem to detect. And when we did some work in the Python using chemicals that we had collected from, from, from beehives, we found that we could indeed attract beetles. So that told us that these guys are not coming in probably because of, of, of visual cues. They're coming in because of the smell of the beehive. Okay? And the sexes here just show you that both sexes are attractive. Okay? So what was released? There was a whole bunch of compounds and I don't expect anybody to remember all these things because I sure as heck can't. I've been doing this for 35 years. I'm a chemist by training. But there was a whole bunch of compounds here, and one of them you may recognize. You know this smell. Anybody who has beehives knows this smell. Anybody who eats bananas knows this smell. This is. This is isopentyl acetate, it's the smell of bananas. It's also the major smell that you smell in the alarm pheromone when you get stung. Okay? So these beetles were queuing into a bunch of chemicals, most of which are associated with the alarm pheromone of the honeybee. So what happens when a honeybee colony gets a little bit stressed? Anybody know? We get an increased level of alarm term, right? So these beetles look like they're keying in on this alarm term. So what we did was we gave them a choice between going to nothing or honey. And we found 90% of the beetles went to the honeybee smell. That's a complete high odor. We had these little observation prints that we put in plexiglass. I didn't bring one today, but uh, and then we pushed air over it and into the flight tunnel, and then we had those beetles fly two meters down to where the where the uh, odor is. Now two meters for a beetle is kind of like 100 yards for you and me, so it's a pretty good test. And we put together this uh, 23, well, let me go back, 23 chemicals that we had identified as being attractive. That's a lot. I mean, that's crazier than Chanel number five, okay? That's just nuts. And when we put that together, we could actually get similar levels of attraction over the control. In fact, when we put the two together and tested the uh, two groups together, there's no difference. They like them both. So I mentioned before about the alarm thermon. Here's the structure of it. It's a very simple molecule, but it's really, really steep. At high levels, you don't want to be anywhere near it. But it was our key component for starting to look at what was going on chemically with these beetles. And the interesting thing we found when we started looking at these things was that if we had bees and brood and comb, we got lots of beetles. If we just had brood and comb, okay, we took away all the bees, all the adults, the queen, everything else, we didn't get very much attraction. But if we put no bees, just took a frame out from a hive that had no bees on it, but had been infested with hive bees, okay? No bees, just hive bees feeding on it. We found that that, that comb was really attractive to the bees, despite the fact that there was no bee produced on our term. So what the heck is going on? We had no idea. Something was a little strange. When we looked at the volatiles in there, lo and behold, we found that isopentyl acetate, okay? It was present in volatiles from the comb that the beetles had been feeding. But there were no bees. 
So we knew that more than the alarm terminal was present. We knew that yeast, like red yeast, produces all kinds of chemicals that are similarly related to those alarm terminal components. And we also knew that this beetle family, which is a really big family, has a real close association with fungi and yeast in its gut. Just like you and I do, we all sometimes eat those probiotics. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Advertisements for yogurt, like Activia is one, that has all these probiotic compounds that can help your digestion. Well, these beetles have yeast in their stomach that helps digest their food. In fact, it's absolutely critical to life. If we have beetles that don't, have yeast resident in their guts. They don't get produced. Kind of cool. So we got founded for science to try and borrow from the University of Florida to uh, take a look and see if there was a special yeast in the guts of these beetles. And there was. It's a really cool one. It's called myomeria. It's related to um, a lot of yeast that we find floating around, but it's also found, found on flowers in pollen, and that will become pretty important a little later on. But this field has this in its gut, and it absolutely will not survive without it. It's passed from the mother to the egg. It's inside the egg shell. Larvae have it in their guts, the pupae have it in their guts. Everybody has it, so it's a probiotic for the people. But the interesting thing was when we put them on pollen and honey, from we took this yeast, we grew it up, and we put it in pollen and honey. All of a sudden, we started catching beetles when we gave those little pollen and honey things a whip. Okay? We did get it when we just had pollen and honey. We did not get it when we just had the yeast growing in a, in a fermentation bed. Okay? So it's absolutely critical for this yeast to have pollen. And when it does have pollen, it produces those attractive compounds. Only when that yeast ferments on pollen in the hive. Okay? Kind of cool. This is a really funky relationship when you think about it. And it'll get even crazier in a little bit. But, so here's what's happening in the hive system. Normally we got a happy group of bees up here that are just having a good time. But then something happens. One of you guys goes out and you lift up the hive top and you start messing with the bees. And the bees don't get happy. Or perhaps we lose or we have a weak queen or something like that. There's a lot of chemical signals. You know, bees use chemistry to communicate. That's about all they do. And when they do that, they release these alarm parents. Now, those little beetles come into that hive because of those alarm parents. A lot of times the bees are going to corral them. Lawrence has seen a lot of this stuff. They'll build little prisons for them. They'll actually even feed them. But if that colony is sick, well, we don't have a queen in there. You know what's going to happen? Those beetles are going to take off and start eating pollen, brood, everything else. It doesn't take a lot of them to get away. When they do that, this fungus gets going to be head. When that fungus gets going to be head, you bring in more beetles from outside. 
What is that thing? That causes this thing, the bees can no longer handle all of those larvae and all of those adults that have just jumped into that hive and they go crazy. The bees, of course, can't control. So what do they do? They leave. You lose everything. You got it. You got no product and you have no bees. So we have an attractant. Can we develop an attractive wound for it? Well, hello. You know, I was uh, in DC at a meeting one time. My aunt was a cell phone went up. Samara was told to turn it off. But that's okay. We'll let people answer the phones because we need to. Um, anyway, so how do you put these 23 chemicals together? You don't, right? That's impossible. You can't make perfume that's cheap. And believe me, guys, perfume, you know, perfumes are not cheap. And that's what we have. So what do you do? Well, we took advantage of this, this yeast, and we uh, put it into fermentation. And it's really easy to do. Just throw it up like you do bread dough. And collect it, put it with honey and water, 4% pollen in pollen patty. It's got to have pollen in it. It's got to have some honey in it. Okay? And water. And we let that ferment for seven days in a bucket. Five gallon bucket. Um, and we ended up with, when we first did it, we used one of my teenagers' socks. But uh, we changed to something a little cleaner now. I'll pass it around. This is the attractant for the small hive beetle that you guys can make. We'll talk about that if you want. It's very easy for you to make it. It's not like bread, beer, uh, anything else fermenting, but it's not. Okay? It's a special yeast. So you have it right here. There's the lure. Next thing was to produce a trap. And we decided back then we'd go with the bottom board because the bottom board is something that is fairly easy to work with. And here's the deal. Um, we live really close. I mean, my lab is really close to Lowe's. So um, Lowe's is one of our big provider of stuff. We went down to Lowe's and we got some two by fours. Okay, and here's the trap right here. Let me just show you. Pilot, two by fours, one by twos, eight crate, Tupperware. Screen that keeps the bees out but allows the beetles to go in. The Tupperware thing is attached onto the bottom. Oh, there's a bucket thing. Okay, it's straight black. We drill some holes in the bottom of the egg cups so that the water will get out. And we just throw that bucket, that piece of smelly sock with the uh, in there. Initially what we did was we had a, sort of a little uh, maze so that when the beetles went in, they couldn't get out. But you know what we found? We found that they didn't need to get out because they were so happy when they got to that really smelly ball of stuff in the bottom that everybody's throwing up over back there. Uh, that it didn't matter. They weren't going to come out anyway. Guess what? Female might be a one to two hundred larvae from a female. So here's the deal. We did a study in Pennsylvania with these traps. And maybe I should get to that a little later, but I'll talk about it now. There's the, let, let's just go through how we set up the trap. There's the egg crates. This is just a moistened uh, piece of stock material. 
and everybody see this? At the end of our little talk today, I want you to come take a look at it. Okay? That's just made out of plastic. We get the plastic not from clothes, from the shop. Eric Paulson, wonderfully young fellow, has worked with us for since he graduated from Santa Fe High School. When was that? Fantastic shop guy, and he builds all our barn boards and stuff. He built this for us out of plexiglass. You can build it or anything you want. What it does is it fits in the front of your barn board. Okay? You fill it that half full of soapy water. It's got a little screen in there. These can't get in. But those dads burn a little art and love it because they have to go out. They don't jump. Art don't jump. You put this on the front of your pond. When those larvae move out of the pond, the pea creates in the ground. They drown. We've caught thousands of larvae using this. We have a publication that's out on things in environmental and entomology, or maybe it's economic entomology. I'm not sure. But this thing is a cheap trick that any small hobbyist can do that's going to take those darn larvae out of your mind. You're going to get them out of your bee yard by doing that, which means they're not going to come back unless you bring more bees in. It's a real simple way to get rid of them. Particularly when you cover it with a truck, also have a little bottom board trap, which is real cheap to make in your small, small money. So now I want to get into this wandering thing a little bit, because this is some really new stuff we've been working on. It's called larval preference. And what we found was uh, one of my technicians found it actually that over the winter we were reusing soil that we had to be incubating in and we lost the damn colony. Okay. None of the none of the larvae incubated, they wander around in that dirt until they die. We had no idea why. So we said it's like I'm a really simple thinker, I'm not real smart. But I said it to myself and to Becky why don't we give them a choice between clean soil and dirty soil? So we took some of the soil they incubated in before and we gave them some clean soil. And the rubber, well, sorry about that. The rubber band here just shows you the divider between the two sides. This is the old soil, this is the new soil. Where did the larvae go? All the red circles to the new soil, you know what they did when they got there? They incubated it. So what's going on? I thought to myself, the only thing they're getting there is the pupil cases and bits and pieces that they leave behind when they pupate. So we mixed up soil with crushed up adults and they didn't pupate in that soil. They went to the other stuff. This is hard to see. I'm very sorry. Just excuse me. And then again, my sim simple idea is okay. The heck is just a little round dish. Okay. One half we treated with an extract that we got from this crushed up beetle. We just threw them in some solvent, kind of like gasoline, but it doesn't smell. We put that on the treated, on the, on the treated side. We put just the solvent on the other side. We gave me the opportunity where you're going to go. And hopefully this is going to work. It's not going to work. So I'm sorry I had a little video there. But, this is the cool part. Okay, so trust me when I say those people all ran to the side and didn't have And it's fun to watch them because it's in my speed and if you ever see the people run, it's cute. But maybe this afternoon I'll figure something out. So the other thing I did being a simpleton that I am is I said, okay, let's get a big pan. This is about three feet by two feet. And we put a line uh, crushed up adults 
in there and dump the beetles wherever they wanted to go. Just dump them randomly in that bucket. And guess which side they stay on or went to. You know, they never cross the line. They always keep on this side and there are thousands of larvae in there. So they will not cross it. Right now what we're doing trying to get what chemical makes those guys not pupate and keep wandering. We know it's solvent extractable. We know it's somewhat volatile. We can spray it in the bee garden when we get an identified. And you're going to kill all those larvae. Okay? Because they're not going to have a place to go. Anyway. No, not going to work. No. So anyway, here, here's the results of that study that I had a video for. You place them right in the middle here, you give them a chance to go where they want to go, and they all stay in the tree at a time. And I'm going to answer questions now, but I'd also like for you guys to come up and take a look here. I have with me a whole bunch, in addition to our stuff, a whole bunch of different traps. I think you can buy these today? No? Yes? You can buy these today from Mr. Cuts. Okay, this is his beetle buster? What? B and J. B and J. Have them on Right. This slides in between the frames, right, Mars? Yes. And it's built with, you know, we, we, uh, we kind of have uh, holes in there small enough that the beetles can get through, but uh, bees can. Okay, that's one. Um, have a little cassette trap here. You can make that out of a little cassette from your CDs. Just drill a hole in it, but this is a commercial one. Take a look at that. That goes in your hive as well. This is a commercial bottom board trap that you can buy from probably Man Lake or, or one of the other providers. Dan? Dan? This is... This catches beetles when they come into the hive. Okay? I don't know how. Yeah, I, I apparently used to work um, I, I'm not quite sure how it works, but there's a little, there's a thing here for the adult to get through, right here, okay? And right here underneath it is a narrower one where the beetles go through. And this is the beetle jail. Beetle jail. You can build this yourself as far as I, I know. I don't think it's a pattern. So the bees can get in, and the high beetles theoretically get stuck in the bottom here. It would be really good if you had a lure in there, you know, and the tree doesn't fall out. Well, you know, I'm a klutz. I mean, for a chemist, you know, I and you know, I take nerves out of insects and stuff, and I can do that in a lab. But you put me in a I've got more scars on me than three point hits and stuff in my test Anyway, so let me tell you how I would brew up an attractive for a small idea. I would get, I'm going to give you two formulations. You want the hard one or the easy one? Hard one first. I would mix up a batch of commercial palm substitute with 4% deep bee collected palm. Okay. I'd add honey and water to make it into a gooey thing like about the consistency of that what you felt in here. Okay, that's mushy like that. Okay. I'd have that in a five meal pit. I would go to my beehive and I would collect 50 or 100 high beetles. Shouldn't be hard if you've got a problem. 
I just throw them in there, and I just went in the shed outside, somewhere where it's not too hot, because they're going to die if it's too hot, you know, you need a little shade for them. And just let them go to town, okay? Then I would put that five-gallon pail into the freezer, after a week, and I would kill all the adults and larvae of the bees we should put in here. Okay. After about a week in the freezer, I'd take it out, let it stand at room temperature until it got nice and smelly, like what you smell there. I'd get my teenagers' old white socks after they were washed, because there's probably a repellent, at least my son in those socks that, you know, you don't want to have. Uh, you can use your husband's underwear, I don't care. You know, just make sure they're clean. And tie it up in a good handful of dough and use that as your lure in your traps. Okay. Here's another thing I recommended a number of years ago, and by golly, it works. Oh, and I don't know when, but it actually works. Go and get applesauce for babies. Okay. The reason you want applesauce for babies is because it's not pasteurized. Okay. Non pasteurized applesauce. They love it. And if you go in here, find every day or so, or a week or whatever you can do. You'll find them in that bottom border in these traps. If you have that in there, because they love it. It gets that nice smell of really ripe apples. You can use a cantaloupe. Cantaloupe's real good if you've got a nice ripe one that really is good. Like, it's just before you're not going to eat it, you know. When it's the best. Not what you get a but you got to let it get real good. And that's a real good attractive point too. But you gotta change that because after a while, you can only get a few days in the seat out of them because after a while they get real funky. And then they're not attracted to anything, including a uh, year old son, you know, who eats everything. So anyway, I want you to come up, take a look. You can see all these things. What you can build 